Welcome to the Mock Trial Lecture Series, sponsored by the Arkansas Bar Association and the Arkansas Chapter of the American Board of Trial Advocates. This presentation is on opening statements and closing arguments. You may wonder what is the main difference between an opening statement and a closing argument? Well, there's a reason why it's called an opening statement, but a closing argument. The main difference between the two is that in your closing, you are allowed to use argument to persuade the jury, while in the opening statement, it's more focused on just the facts without inferences or speculation. The main purpose of an opening statement is to tell the jury what you're asking them to do and how you're going to prove you're entitled to it. So the first thing you wanna do is communicate your theme. Now your theme should answer the question, why does this case matter? It, you want it to be a moral principle or an ethical, common sense understanding that everyone on the jury will have. And this theme should be factored into your presentation in general, through your direct examination, your cross-examination, your opening and closing. You want the theme to be the first thing and the last thing the jurors hear. So make sure that you start out communicating your theme. The opening statement is also an opportunity for you to state the facts of your case persuasively, but without using argument. Now this is the hardest thing to do. You want to be persuasive and you want to convince the jury to return a verdict in your favor. And there are some ways that you can do this without crossing the line into argument. And that's one of the things that we'll talk about today. You also, of course, want to tell the jury what the legal standard is that they will have to use to decide the case. The trials are about the law as well as the facts, and so it's important that the jury have at least a basic understanding of what the legal standard is before they hear the facts of your case. After your opening statement, the jury should be able to answer the question, what is your case about and why does this case matter? in a way that is favorable to your client. So those are the goals of the opening statement. And here is a basic structure that will help you establish those goals. The first thing you want to do in your opening statement is of course introduce yourself to the jury. Hello, my name is Adrian Griffiths and I represent John Doe. Of course you need to identify with your client and make sure they know whose side of the case you're arguing. You need to communicate your theme and basic information about your case. Now, I'm sure there will be a, an opportunity for you to learn more about your theme, but um, it is very important that the theme be communicated right out of the box so that the jury will understand what the point of your case is. And you want to give them some basic information. This is a trial about a criminal matter my client is accused of first degree murder. Just a basic overview of why the jury is there. Then you wanna tell your client's story. You need to give them the who, what, when, where, why. Basic facts about what happened that led up to this lawsuit. When you're telling the story, you want to make sure that you do it in a way that is understandable and that Put your client's version of the facts in the best light. You want to make sure that you personalize your client. Make them someone that the jury will like. That is one of the goals for the jury to, of course, like your client and may, it may make them more likely to decide the case favorably to your client. After you tell the story, you need to preview what your proof will be. And what I mean by that is you need to give them a brief overview of what witnesses you're going to call, what you expect the witnesses to testify about, what exhibits you're going to introduce, and what those exhibits are going to show the jury. Now, it is difficult to do this sometimes without crossing into argument because this evidence has not been before the jury yet. And there's a way to get around that, which we'll discuss on the next slide. During this section, though, you also need to make sure that you downplay the weak points of your case. No case is ever perfect, and there's always going to be a set of facts or a particular witness 
which is going to be negative towards your client. You don't want to ignore this information and let the jury hear it for the first time from the other side, because that may make it look like either you or your client are hiding something. So you wanna make sure that you bring up those facts that may be detrimental, and then you need to cast them in a light that is favorable to your client. Do a little bit of explanation so that the jury will understand how those negative facts fit into your version of the story and fit in with your theme. You also need to explain the legal standard, but you wanna keep this pretty basic. At this point, the jury is more interested in what the facts are, what the case is about, than the jury instructions and the jury charge that they'll have to read later. But you wanna give them an overview so that they'll understand what information they need to be looking for in order to find in favor of your client. And finally, of course, you need to tell the jury what you want them to do. If you're a prosecutor, you need to tell the jury that this evidence will show that the defendant is guilty. If you're the plaintiff in a civil lawsuit, you want to tell the jury that you're asking them to award your client money damages, if that's what your case is about. Make sure that they know what they need to do to find in favor of your client. There usually aren't many objections in an opening statement, but you wanna make sure that you can avoid the other side objecting to part of your proof. So one of the most popular objections in an opening statement, as you might expect, is that a particular statement is argumentative. Now you can avoid this by simply stating the facts. Don't draw conclusions or make inferences. You may know that a particular witness may not be credible by the end of the trial, but you don't want to argue that a witness is lying or someone is not credible, for example, before that witness has even testified. You also, at this point in the trial, don't know exactly what evidence is going to be admitted. So you wanna make sure that you do not make a statement that later will not happen during the trial, which could hurt your credibility with the jury. The way that you can avoid this most easily is to preface your statements about what the witnesses will testify to and what the evidence will be with the evidence will show or Dr. Smith will testify. Now, of course, you don't want to use these two statements over and over and over again because that won't be very pers persuasive to the jury. There are other ways to say these statements that will accomplish the same purpose. You can say, we will bring you an expert witness, Dr. Smith, who will tell you that, and then continue with what you believe Dr. Smith will say. The evidence will show, a variation on that might be, during this trial, you will see photographs of the injury. This is a way to avoid being objected to as argumentative because you are simply stating what you are going to provide as far as proof to the jury, rather than establishing that this particular fact definitively happened. Another objection that you want to avoid during an opening statement is to misleading the jury. You don't wanna speculate on why a witness might have done a particular thing or said a particular thing. You do not want to make an argument about why you think certain events happened in your case, unless you know that you have definitive proof that will be admitted during your trial. Don't speculate, and as I mentioned earlier, don't comment on the credibility of witnesses that haven't testified yet. You do not at this point want to bring up issues like uh, witness bias or credibility issues. You also cannot misstate the law. You want to make sure that when you discuss your legal standards, you don't mislead the jury into a legal standard that they will not ultimately be asked to decide. Make sure you know the law as well as your facts, and you should be able to avoid objections during your opening statement. Now, on to closing argument, which in my opinion is the more fun, fun version of the opening statement because it is your opening statement, but you can add argument. The goals of your closing are to solidify the support of the jurors who you know were already on your side 
but you want to also persuade the ones who may not be on your side. And here's the way that you can do this. You want to give the jurors a reason to feel good about returning a verdict in favor of your client. Use your theme for this. Your theme should be a moral or a common sense principle that ties in to your client's story. Use your theme to establish your theory of the case and why your client is morally right and should win the lawsuit. Of course, you need to back this up with factual support. By the time you get to the closing argument, all the evidence is in and the jury has heard all the facts and the proof that they're going to. So you can use all this to establish how each piece of evidence fits in with your theme and your theory of the case. After your closing argument, you want the jurors to feel like returning a verdict for your client is the right thing to do. Here's how you do that. The first thing you want to do is explain your theory of the case. Now, whereas in your opening statement, you were a little bit limited on explaining why things happened or your client's opinion about why certain things developed the way they did in the fact situation. In your closing argument, you are free to argue however you think the story should be told that best fits with your theory and your client's version of the events. Obviously, in many cases, there are disputes between witnesses. Witnesses will remember facts differently. And in this part of the trial, you can call the witnesses out on their credibility and ensure that your client's version of the facts and your witness's testimony are the ones that the jurors believe. You can argue that a witness was not credible because either they told a different story in their witness statement than they told on the stand, maybe they did not remember the facts when they were testifying on the stand, or in this part of the argument, you can bring up inherent biases of witnesses. For example, if there's a criminal defendant whose mother is testifying on his behalf, you can bring up the fact that a mother might say anything to protect her son. So you resolve these factual disputes between witnesses by b highlighting issues in their testimony that can affect their credibility or their truthfulness with the jury. The second part of the closing argument is you want to connect the facts that you've just told the jury to the law in the case. And this is where you're going to use your jury instructions. You will want to go through and explain to the jury what the elements of the crime are or the elements of the civil cause of action. And then you want to go through each of these elements and tell them how you met your burden of proof or how the other side did not meet their burden of proof using the facts that the witnesses have testified to and the evidence that has been introduced. Finally, you want to connect your theme to the requested verdict. You, of course, restate your theme. You want to open with your theme in the opening statement, and then you want to, again, close your argument with the theme again. And you want to use this theme to influence the jury that deciding the case in your client's favor is the right thing to do. And then ask them again, tell them again what you want them to do. Find the defendant guilty. Award a million dollars in damages to my client. You also want to be careful to avoid objections during the closing argument as well. One of the most common objections is arguing something that's outside the record. Now, once you get to the closing argument, all the evidence has been before the jury. And maybe things didn't go like you thought they would. Maybe an exhibit that you thought for sure was going to be admissible has been excluded. You're going to have to adjust your closing argument to, to establish the facts that you want the jury to hear without that piece of evidence. This requires thinking on your feet and adjusting your argument to fit in with the actual evidence that was presented during the trial. Another way that this could be a problem is if a witness didn't testify the way you thought that they were going to. 
You need to make sure that everything you're telling the jury in your closing argument was is actually before them. So when they go to deliberate, that they will know that what you're telling them is the truth and they'll have the evidence to back it up. So the opposing counsel may object in your closing argument if you bring up testimony or comment on exhibits that were not actually introduced during the trial. Again, a possible objection is misleading the jury. The jury has to base the verdict on only the evidence that they've heard. Again, you cannot bring up statements or exhibits or documents that were not referred to during the trial. Another way that opposing counsel may argue that you were misleading the jury is if you comment on the appropriateness of the law or, again, misstate the law. The jury has their set of jury instructions and the jury charge, and it tells them the law that they have to use to decide the case. And they have to conform their decision to the law, regardless of whether the law is right or wrong in your opinion. You cannot tell the jury to ignore the law, and you cannot ask them to decide the case on a principle of law that they do not have in front of them in that jury charge. So you want to make sure that you avoid those two objections by sticking to the law that you have that the jury will see in front of them. And that concludes the presentation on opening statements and closing arguments. Best of luck to you in the competition.